Greetings, my very dear friends. Welcome back to All Quiet in the Trenches. We have problems, apparently. Headquarters wants to talk. That'll be Von Karsbrook, because he always wants to talk. Field Kitchen. Well, we've been on double rations, which my men no doubt love. But now we're on low supplies. Which means we're going to have to cut rations. Or... I don't know. We'll be fine anyway. Or maybe we won't. There are certainly no end to the possibilities. Let's see what uh, Linica has to say. And who is this new fellow, Hunt? Hunt officer, the latrine is filled to the brim. Someone should take care of it before it overflows. Are they strained? I will grant him a reward. No, I will not. I will just leave. I'm not going to punish him for telling me that. You look like you're exactly the man I'm looking for. Hound officer, right? Wonderful. If I may introduce myself, Reinhard Hund, your new guy. I, uh, I hope my predecessor is fine. Tell me about your personal issues, Reinhard Hund. What do you want to know, Hound officer? Tell me about your family. My parents sent me to war to get me back on track. <laughs> I mean, of course I wanted to go to war, and my parents support me in this. More about family. My father is a mirror maker. We deal with very well healed customers, so while our reputation is definitely very important and until today spotless. More about family. Don't know what else to say about this at the moment. Well, damn. Okay. So he's fit. He's on double rations. He's been getting extra food without doing any work for it, the little fucking bastard. Very tolerant, because he's well fed. Very pragmatic, because he likes to stay well fed. Fairly diplomatic. Fairly courageous. Very sociable. Fairly compassionate. Okay. Where are you from, Hunt? I'm from Neustadt and the Slauce. Uh, but I'm more drawn to Berlin, where so much is happening right now. More about origin. I don't know what else to say about this at the moment. Okay, I should impose a punishment on him, but I'm not going to. Let us leave. Still haven't set up the camp. The dream fatigue. Someone has to do this shit job. If no one does, the troops' mood and hygiene will suffer for it. Well, we have a new guy for a reason. Sorry, Hunt. Get used to it. You are the new man. That's the way it will always work. Um... Do you want to talk at all? No, you do not. If there's anyone who can lead us to victory, then it's you, Heron to Arfasir. I'm sure of it. Yes, I will win the entire war for you. By Christmas 1915, Avon. I would do it by Christmas 1914, but there's no going back in time. Let's check out the village outskirts. Why not? Madame La Roche. Bonjour, monsieur. I use a hound officer whose people pitched their tents right there at the camp entrance. My name is Madame Marianne La Roche. 
I'm one of the village elders in our community. Since I can speak German, I try my best to mediate between the residents of the village and the soldiers here in the camp. Ask for food. Give me food. If you're in urgent need, we can share with you. I hope you won't forget our willingness to help, monsieur. I absolutely will not forget your willingness to help. You feed my men, we will look after you, I guarantee it. Even if we have orders to the contrary. I'll collect food from the villagers for you, monsieur. Send one of your people over to pick them up later. I will. I absolutely will. Um, who's good? It seems like a job for Khan. Because he's optimistic as well as physically fit. Although, yeah, they're all strained. So he'll hate it less. Alright. And now, I bet Donkey Jobber McGee wants to talk. I mean, Leutnant von Karlsburg. No! Well, he, he will. But... Who are you? Witz? How are you, Herr Unto Officer? Not bad. I will leave you. So that so I'm... Oh, this conversation is at uh, Witz end. Ah, uh aha. -huh. Terrible. Field Cook Kozilinski, what do you have for me? Counter officer, I uh, supplies are running low. I would love to give the men more, but as long as the supply situation remains uncertain, I will only serve sa standard rations. And maybe we should think about giving even less so we can make our stock last longer. Mm, no, let's maintain them. Because we've got fresh food coming in from the uh, farm. Uh, okay. Headquarters. Henek, anything? Uh, when's the next shipment? Couple of days. All right. Okay. Hello, Nunt. These villagers are suspect. I keep hearing stories of, t of attacks by f France to an hour. Well, I don't know. And our comrades along the front organize some patrols through the village, Herr Underofficier. Show the French who's in control here so that they don't get any foolish ideas. Um. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I will say I will do that, but I am not going to do that. Because Lotz and Lineker need to finish setting up the camp. That's far more important. Tuesday, March 23rd, 1915. When I saw the soldier Alfred Lotz at camp, he was inspecting his assigned rifle with great interest, almost as if he was memorizing the de design. It works just fine, or do you have any doubts about it? I said coldly. Lotz looked up. Not at all, he said. I am a toolmaker, I can see that. Ah, good to have you with us. Could be a useful skill. Yeah, your skills could be very useful here. He nodded gratefully and turned back to his rifle. What kind of response is... I don't care if you were a craftsman, you're a soldier now. No! Good soldiers are more than just soldiers. And good soldiers follow orders. 
Wednesday, March 24th, 1915. Hunt looked neat and well-groomed, and yet I noticed right away that his appearance did not entirely comply with the regulations. Only when he came closer did I realize that he wore a blue forget-me-not in his buttonhole and had turned up the collar of his uniform jauntily. His sleeves had also been skillfully and prominently rolled up. You look fancy, I said good-humouredly. Hunt was pleased. Yes, I am flair for aesthetics, he declared. Vince war is over, I'll make films that capture the beauty in this world. Oh, you work on films? I asked. It was at this moment that Hunt really came to life. He talked about the budding film industry that was just beginning to flourish, and how he'd gained a foothold in it. At first I only operated the projector in the cinema, but then the owner of the cinema, who also owns a film production company, started using me more and more for all kinds of work. He never stopped talking, and I listened attentively until we were interrupted. I was thinking it was going to be Von Karsbrook again. Okay. Okay. Positive events added. That's good. Hunt is now optimistic and comradely. No one's on double rations. Low supply stock. Okay. What are we doing? Where are we going? The field kitchen. Zelinsky, what have you for me? Please tell me that supplies have come in. Counter officer, rats everywhere. They're devouring our food stocks. We have to do something. Oh shit. Well, we'll maintain normal rations. Pest control. Uh, is anyone not exhausted? Sorry, Lutz. Und, und. There we go. Because, yeah, we can't have rats in the food stores. That's just not good. Not good for anybody. Uh, I'd rather not talk to you. Henek, mate. The officers are dissatisfied with me because by now even the quality of their rations is suffering from the current supply bottlenecks. I have a suggestion of how the both of us could help each other through a trade. Are you interested? Yeah, why not? Trade provisions. If you give me some of your canned meat and have a man move all of it, I'll give you bigger bread rations for your people in return. And this will make your rations more boring. You'll end up with significantly more daily rations than before. Do we have a deal? Hell yes, we have a deal. My good buddy. Wonderful, you just made my life a lot easier. See how our officers can get surprisingly petty when they don't get what they want. Yes. Yes, I know a certain lieutenant who's probably within earshot who we won't talk about. Any idea about the next shipment? It should have been here a while ago. Unfortunately, I don't know how long it'll take to get to us. Alright. Alright, now, um... Von Karsbrook. Finally, took you long enough, Helen Torfazir. The Major ordered the start of the offensive this morning. Unfortunately, we don't get a chance to win fame and honor just yet. 
Via in reserve for the time being. Make sure your men are ready to move out at all times. After all, we don't want to disappoint the Major once it's finally our turn. Yes. Want to uh, ruin your chances of a promotion. I am not going to ask him for more work right now. I really don't want to anyway. Uh, oh, Cone's the most happy or optimistic at least. I don't think we have much choice. I think we have to talk to him. Damn it. We have a few prisoners of war in our camp that need guarding until they can be moved to a prison. Until then, it will be your responsibility. Oh, great. Guarding can prisoners. Prisoners. Ah, shit. Um... Captives need to be guarded. It's just one of those things. Hello, hey, officer. Do you have a minute? We need your help with something here in the hospital. Uh, yes. Tuesday, March 30th, 1915. Thank you for taking the time, Hello, hey, officer. Sister Elizabeth seemed tense, even though the field hospital did not seem too crowded at the moment. Please follow me, she motioned. It led me past the hospital toward a barren patch of land with a series of shallow ditches dug in a line. Graves. I heard there's a new offensive coming. Elizabeth paused and turned towards me with dire seriousness in her eyes and pointed towards the graves. Well, we're going to need a lot more of those. Do you think you could spare some of your men t to dig more of them? There should be two dig, not the dig. I'll see what I can do. I might be able to spare one of them. But I can't promise anything. I conceded with some hesitation. Elizabeth nodded with gratitude and put a gentle hand on my arm. Thank you, Aaron, to officer. That's all I ask. You're, I know you're in a difficult position, and I don't want to make it any harder on you. With those words, she turned away to hurry back to the field hospital. Shit, dig graves, that's another two-man job, and it's depressing, but it will make Nurse Elizabeth grateful. And improves hospital occupancy. Damn it. Count Officer, your men are exhausted. With your permission, I'd like to give them larger portions to get them back into shape. Oh, I mean, okay. You want to give them double rations, give them double rations. I'm okay with that. Okay, let's get out of pest control. Is there anything you can be added to? No. Just resting. Okay. <sighs> Sorry about this, Zelensky. You'll have to deal with your own rats. Tuesday, March 30th. After my deal with Felt Intendant, Zelensky could only give out extremely small portions of meat. While the rations were being distributed, some of the men grumbled discontentedly about the situation. Yeah, I'm just going to explain the trade I made to them. Why not? Be honest with the men. Let's meet for us in exchange for more other rations that would nourish us longer. The men were upset about my decision. It seemed they would have judged the supply situation differently than I had. 
Uh, yeah, I like my meat too, lads. I do, but it's now the eighth, the fifth of April, Monday, nineteen fifteen. One day, Cohen was supposed to receive an exceptionally large Liebeskabe? Gift of love. Gifts donated by people all over the Empire sent to soldiers at the front line through charities. Ah, they mainly contained warm clothing, food and luxury items, reading material and everyday items such as soap, candles, handkerchiefs or washcloths. That's cool. Actually, that, the whole hypertexty tool tippy thing I'm really liking that that's well done totally not aliens for that very convincing again I believe you I believe you're all from earth every last one of you this particular parcel contained a generic letter of encouragement on quite a few cans of food I'm going to suggest that he share the contents with his comrades. When I gave him the package, of course, Herald Officer, he confirmed and distributed the contents of his Liebesgabe among his fellow soldiers. Hunt was especially grateful and returned the favour by sharing his gifts from home with Khan. That's excellent. That was clearly a good choice. <coughs> April 11th, Sunday. Madame La Roche, the speaker of the nearby French village, greeted me with some reservation and quickly cut to the chase of why she'd come to meet me. The cannons have been thundering day and night, and the villagers are scared, she explained. Especially the younger children are suffering. It was. Only in such moments that it occurred to me is that our artillery truly had been firing almost non-stop for some time now. Of course, the distant, if constant, grumbling paled in comparison to the actual impacts we faced on the battlefield, and I had long learned to put the noise out of my mind, or perhaps my hearing had just gotten that bad. Do you perhaps know how long this will continue? Madame La Roche asked carefully. I think we'll go with until the Major decides it's been enough. I commented with a shrug. After all, we had to live with the noise just like they did. But no one bothered to notify us about these things. Madame Laroche frowned at my dismissive reply. Let's hope that time will come soon, she sighed. With that, she said her brief goodbyes, turned and walked away. I'm sorry, Madame La Roche. It's just one of those things. Oh, we can do the pest control now. Okay. And we have another new fella. Well, you, Fram, trained in first aid. Useful. Slow. Not good. Attentive. Um, you're on pest control with Hunt. Because it needs to be done. But, meanwhile, let us speak, Fran. Hunt of us here, officer, right? Excuse me, I've had little practice with this military rank insignia. I was placed under your command. Fram, my name, Elma Fram. What are your personal issues, Elmer Fram? Having it phrased as personal issues does sound a little confrontational, but it's fine. What do you want to know, Herr Her Onto Officer? Family. I am a family man, and I'll be happy to check in at home in a few months. More about family. I have two sons and a daughter. It is not good for boys or girls to grow up without their father. But I'll be home soon. Yes, of course. We'll win the war by Christmas. More about family. I'm worried about my wife, too. 
She has to lead a completely different life now. Is integrated into the war society. But nobody asks what that does to the mind. More about family. I don't know what else to say about this at the moment. Origin! Vienna may just be my adopted home, but that's where I belong. Everything that was before feels like from another life that is strange to me. I'm lucky to have come to this wonderful city. More about origin. I come from a place near Spare. But, you know, I grew out of that a long time ago. I'm now a renowned man in Vienna. I'm part of the Wednesday Society there. I'm surrounded exclusively by cultured people. More about origin. I don't know what else to say about this at the moment. Okay, fair enough. Whatever. Uh, field hospital is still a field hospital. Um... Lineker! So, there's a pub in the village, Hound Officer. Hunt and I would like to visit with your permission. Oh. Hunt and Lineker. Hunt just wants to get out of the pest control duties. But, fine. Hunt and Lineker can go to the pub, and Cone can go on pest control. Meanwhile, shy, sir. This pest control thing's not going to get done, I reckon. Ever. Zelinsky, what have you for me? Counter officer, I'm never. I'm doing what I can, but I'll never be able to handle the rats on my own. Please assign some of your men to help, else we'll lose even more food. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go back to standard rations as well. Um. Now, it is headquarters. Panic first. Hound officer, we still haven't been resupplied. Let's hope it won't take too long. Next shipment. The delivery should have been here a while ago. Unfortunately, I don't know how long it will take to get to us. Offer help. Okay. He doesn't have anything. Okay. Uh, von Karsburg. The field laundry can't keep up with the demand. To relieve them, your unit will be responsible for keeping their uniforms clean by themselves. Remember that army standards are to be upheld nonetheless. Here, Ultra Officer. Okay, um, sorry, Lotz, you're on laundry duty, my dude. Okay. Hey, everybody's at work or recovering in hospital. I hope Cummerbund can actually heal and come back to us soon. But, um... Yeah. Everybody's doing a thing. There's nothing else to do that we haven't... hasn't been clicked on. We can just next turn. Average prestige, excellent mood. I like the excellent mood part. Oh! Thursday, April 15th, 1915. When I met Elmar Fram, I was relieved. According to his files, he could also have been a doctor in the military hospital, and I had expected corresponding frustration and disapproval from him. But he seemed relaxed and composed about his appointment to his simple soldiering. It takes me out of my work, he admitted. For those few months, he shrugged his shoulders. It could also take longer. Might take longer, I warned him. He looked at me as if I were unpatriotic or stupid.
I calmed him down. Here in the field, you just get a different view of things, you know. Get familiar with it, and then you'll see. Maybe it'll work well out with your schedule. He nodded hesitantly. In a few months' time in Vienna, it's the annual conference of the Wednesday Psychological Society, which was an early psychoanalytic research group that was founded in Vienna in 1902 by, among others, Sigmund Freud. As the name suggests, the group met regularly on Wednesdays to give lectures and discussions related to the emerging, emerging field of psychoanalysis. Okay, of which I am a member. I am expected to be there on that date. All the distinguished experts will be there. I nodded as if that was no problem at all. I didn't know if I'd convinced him. But I would probably have to decide whether I wanted to be honest with him in the future or not. He's probably not going to make that meeting. Friday, April 23rd, 1915. Come avant. He's back. He came hurrying toward me. Clearly upset and with a blood-stained uniform. Go on to office here. Have you seen the story, sorry state of the field hospital? He asked, visibly aghast. I just helped carry one of the wounded who couldn't make it on his own to the field hospital. The injured are everywhere and the beds are overflowing already. The nurses told me to just drop him off wherever as they say I had no time to tend to him anyhow. I'd known with the intense fighting of the last few days that a lot of injured were passing through our camp. But to think that the state of the field hospital had already gotten so bad. Is there nothing to be done? The soldier pleaded with me. I agree, we need to do everything we can to help. Of course, this was primarily about saving our wounded comrades' lives, but a less overburdened field hospital might also be of help to ourselves if any of us were to be wounded on our next deployment. I'm sure the others would help as well, come up untouched with conviction and hurried away, probably to inform his comrades. I should talk to Elizabeth soon and offer help. Okay, um... Come up is back. He's still lightly wounded and exhausted. Ah, alrighty. I've been released from the field hospital here on to office here. I'm still a bit bruised, but I'm feeling a lot better already. The rest will surely heal soon. Yep. Surely will, and the war will be over by Christmas. For the most part, we are able to defend our food stocks here on to office here, but the rats they keep coming. Okay. Okay. We'll see about that. Any news on the next shipment yet, my dude? No. Should have been here a while ago. I know they should have. Field Hospital. Nurse Elizabeth. This is my first break today and I have to go back in soon. Current workload. Feel massively overburdened. So many lives lost because we just don't have the time and manpower. Offer assistance! You're a godsend here onto officers. Your men would be of great help, as many as you can spare. Accept. Wonderful, thank you. Send the men to me and I'll instruct them. Okay, um. I am not going to send Coverbunt to assist in the field hospital. He is way too exhausted. 
But he can put up with doing laundry duty. I don't give a shit how in intolerant he is. Uh, Linux is well rested. Okay. Current can do pa uh, pest control and so can Hund actually. No. Fram, because bugger him. The rest of you. Get your asses to the hospital and help out. Sister Elizabeth needs you. Sunday, May 2nd, 1915. Sunday service usually lifted the spirits in camp, especially among the more religious of the men. Accordingly, I was, fi I was relieved when a military chaplain finally came by and many of the soldiers rushed to the opportunity to listen to his sermons. Military chaplain. Field clergymen in the German army often had little time left to deal with the everyday concerns of soldiers after taking care of the wounded and burying the dead. A priest or pastor in the army often had to look after up to 1,600 soldiers. The few and initially even unpaid rabbis even more. Well. As usual, Kammerbund was first among the pious congregating at the service. Still, as the small procession passed me by, he took the time for a brief chat to tell me, You know, Herr Unteroffizier, I think I could lead a sermon too. For I came here, I studied theology after all, and we would no longer have to wait for another man to undertake the arduous journey. Well, you know what, all right, from now on you'll be leading sermons. I decided. For a moment, Kamabant began beaming from ear to ear, but he quickly caught himself and turned sombre once more. If so, see your orders, of course I accept, he told me with a respectful bow, before hurrying to catch up with the other soldiers. Turned Kamabant into some kind of priest. Oh, he's dejected now. Why is he de Oh, he's wounded now? What happened? Oh, we have a heat wave. What the hell happened to you, Cummerbund? How could you injure yourself on laundry duty? Lutz. Count officer, the latrine is filled to the brim. Someone should take care of that before it overflows. Ah, you're right. Fram, sorry. But uh, you are the newest recruit. It's the way of things. Can't just have the youngest do it all the time. I think we've gotten rid of the rats here, Hunter Officer. I haven't seen any trace of them in days. The food stocks are finally safe again. Excellent. Glad to hear it. We have low food supplies, though. Um. Hennec. Ah, Herr and Officer. Resupply came in. I had some bring your ration directly to your unit stockpile. Next shipment. I don't expect the next supply shipment for at least a month. Okay. Do you need any help? Glad you asked, Herr and Officer. The artillery is using a lot of ammunition these days. My people have already complained that they can hardly keep up. So there's no harm in having more helpers to load the cart. I'll take as many as you can spare. Okay. That I can probably do. At least one or two men. 
now, Herr Leutnant. The Major has finally given us the marching orders. We're going to battle soon, about time. I hope you kept your people ready as ordered. I expect you and your men to give it your all in the field, Herr Officer. This is our chance to chase the French out of their trenches once and for all. Yeah, great. Um, Hunt, laundry duty. The rest of you, you're unloading carts. All of you. panic has been good to us. We should be good to him too. Sunday, May 9th, 1915. Fun evening, Cohen was sitting in front of his tent, polishing his boots with dedication. Lotz came up and watched quietly for a bit before asking, Why do you even bother? They'll just get dirty again. Cohen frowned. So the clothes and homes... And still you clean those, don't you? Lotz shrugged. But those don't get dirty every other step. Our boots do, especially in this mud. Besides, who am I supposed to impress with my shiny boots around here? Hearing that, Cohn paused, laid down his cleaning rag, and locked eyes with Lutz. His expression somber and grave. Honor demands that a German soldier is to represent the fatherland at all times. With a contemptuous downward gaze, he added, And your boots are a disgrace to the fatherland. Lutz rolled his eyes dismissively. It was then that he noticed me, and for a moment worry flashed across his face. Hello, to our office here. Since the second half of the 18th century, the term fatherland was used to refer to one's country of origin and to whose one nation one felt a sense of belonging. With the development of a national identity in the German Empire, the term also became ideologically burdened and was used to glorify the soldier's death for the fatherland. Of course. Um, yeah, clean your dirty boots. It is kind of my job to enforce discipline. I ordered Lurt strictly. He mumbled something under his breath, but begrudgingly complied. Cohen gave me a respectful nod. Friday, May 14th. 1915. We were preparing for the imminent operation a few days from now. The mood was tense enough, but it seemed to be particularly hard on Fran. When he had heard of our upcoming deployment, he'd turned pale, and the fear had not left his eyes since. Yes, getting back to the boot thing, I've heard it put roughly that uh, if a soldier isn't going to go to the effort of polishing his boots, then he's not likely to maintain his rifle or other, you know, it's just a sign of him not being the best he can be, which is not what you want in warfare. Fran, is everything all right? I asked him carefully. Perhaps there was some way to help him handle the situation. He looked up and made it an attempt at concealing his emotions before finally sighing deeply and opening up a little. To be honest, no, Herr Anto Officer. It's the sort of going to battle and possibly never return. He gulped and lowered his gaze. I nodded. Every soldier knows this fear. Mm. Together, we'll come through. I promised. You and I and all our comrades, we just have to watch out for one another. He skeptically glanced over towards the other men. His features hardened. And what are they supposed to do against a bullet destined for me? He turned away and returned to his tasks, as if to make it abundantly clear that he considered the conversation over. Hey, okay. Fram's got latrine duty from now on. <laughs> 
Monday, May 17th, 1915. Then, tomorrow, we march to battle, announced Lieutenant von Karlsbruck. He had summoned all his subordinate officers to discuss the upcoming operation. Their fear of what might come was clearly palpable, but most of them did their best to cover it up with their heads high and chests puffed up with their heads high and chests puffed up with pride was what I was trying to say. The goal of our mission is to conquer and hold the next trench line, as the lieutenant explained the plan. So far there was no difference to most attack plans. But we have an ace up our sleeve. Artillery is in position, just waiting to cut off reinforcements from the enemy. I expect you to use this advantage aggressively and decisively. Do not disappoint me. At your command, Lieutenant, the officers around me expressed with varying degrees of enthusiasm. At your command, Herr Lieutenant. I joined them. The lieutenant nodded, satisfied, saluted, and dismissed us. Going to cut here and end this episode so that we go straight into battle next time on All Quiet in the Trenches. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And farewell for now.